and good men. So it's just finished lunchtime, dear friends, so we recollect ourselves in silence now before the living Jesus here present on the altar before us. So we gather all our thoughts before him, truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. The Jesus we look at in the beautiful image of mercy is the Jesus who is really here on the altar this afternoon. Let's listen to this gospel. It's an unusual gospel, but I think in the present time in which we live, all of us in our parishes, we, we sense the force of evil, the force of darkness. And we come today to Jesus to free us, and indeed to free our brothers and sisters, to free our nation from the force of darkness and evil. It's the gospel of the Gerasian demoniac. They reached the country of the Gerasians on the other side of the lake. And no sooner had Jesus left the boat than a man came with an unclean spirit from the tombs towards him. The man lived in the tombs and no one could secure him anymore, even with a chain because he had often been secured with fetters and chains, but had snapped the chains and broken the fetters, and no one had the strength to control him. All night and all day among the tombs and in the mountains, he would howl and gash himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and fell at his feet and shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? Swear by God you will not torture me. For Jesus had been saying to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. What is your name? Jesus asked. My name is Legion, he answered, for there are many of us. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the di district. Now there was there on the mountainside a great herd of pigs feeding. And the unclean spirits begged him, send us to the pigs, let us go into them. So he gave them leave, and with that the unclean spirits came out and went into the pigs. And the herd of about 2,000 pigs charged down the cliff into the lake, and there they were drowned. The swineherds ran off and told their story in the town and in the country round about, and the people came to see what had really happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his full senses, the very man who had had legion in him before, and they were afraid. And those who had witnessed it, reported it, what had happened to the demoniac and what had become of the pigs. Now they began to implore Jesus to leave the neighborhood. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed begged to be allowed to stay with him. Jesus would not let him, but said to him, go home to your people and tell them all that the Lord in his mercy has done for you. So the man went off and proceeded to spread throughout the Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him, and everyone was absolutely amazed. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear boys and girls, we are gathered here in front of Jesus this afternoon. He is the reason we are here today, and we are approaching the great hour of grace, the three o'clock hour. So this is a moment when Jesus' graces are flowing abundantly down upon us. So let us really just focus just on Jesus just now, on his real, living, powerful presence, because no doubt many of you here are afflicted 
with family difficulties, health difficulties, so many difficulties all around you. But really, dear friends, we come to focus on Jesus. And what does Jesus say to us? The sin that hurts him most. What's the sin that hurts him most? Yes? I can't hear you. What is the sin that hurts Jesus the most? Lack of trust. Giving in to fear, discouragement, anxiety, when he has the almighty power to solve all our problems and the problems of our nation. We come to him now at this sacred moment and welcome to all of you on the internet who are joining us this, this afternoon. Or those of you who will be listening to this on CD, we'll be praying for you as well. And what are we coming to say to Jesus this evening at this moment? What words are we saying to him? I trust in you, but we're also saying I'm sorry. Isn't that right? I'm sorry, Lord, for the sins I have committed, for giving in to sin and offending you. I am sorry. You know, I was reading in 445 in the diary, and I'd always recommend you all to have a diary. And... Faustina saw Jesus being tortured and crucified. Then she saw them being replaced by priests and religious and laity, and they were scourging him. And she was given to understand that it was our sins, our sins that were scourging him, especially the sins of impurity. So we're coming to say sorry to the Lord in humility today, and I would really encourage anyone who's having doubts about confession today, please do not miss this opportunity, even if it's been a short while. Come to Jesus in this wonderful sacrament today. And Faustina has a few things to say to us about confession, which I think are important to recall. She says to us in the diary that the Lord said to her, Daughter, when you go to confession, to the fountain of my mercy, the blood and water which came forth from my heart always flows down upon your soul and ennobles it. Every time you go to confession, immerse yourself entirely in my mercy, with great trust, so that I may pour the bounty of my grace upon your soul. When you approach the confessional, know this, that I myself am waiting there for you. I am only hidden by the priest, but I myself act in your soul. Here the misery of the soul meets the God of mercy. Tell souls that from this fount of mercy, souls draw graces solely with the vessel of trust. If their trust is great, there is no limit to my generosity. The torrents of grace inundate humble souls. The proud remain always in poverty and misery because my grace turns away from them to humble souls. I don't know if you ever heard the story about St. Macarius' conversation with the devil. The devil one day appeared to St. Macarius and he said, he said, you fast and do without food, the devil said to him. But he said, I never eat. He said, you get up in the night and do without sleep to watch and pray, but I never sleep. But there's one thing the devil said to St. Macarius that you do that I could never do. Oh, what's that, St. Macarius asked. And the devil was unwilling to reveal, but he was commanded to do so. He said, to humble myself. I could never humble myself. So, my dear friends, we're coming.
coming to Jesus, who cured and set free the demoniac from all the demons. There's demons in our lives too, and we pray that the Lord will reveal what those demons are to us today. The Lord will show us where we most need to be liberated. And we come with trust in the most embarrassing sins of our souls and our lives, opening our souls to the priest. And Faustina recommends that we pray for the priest. While you're standing there waiting in the queue, pray for the priest that you're waiting to hear your confession. St. Faustina was told by Jesus, the priest doesn't matter really, he's the instrument. It doesn't matter which priest you go to. Pray that, he will, that the Lord will speak through whatever priest you approach today, because speak to you, Jesus will. O Lord Jesus, lay your healing hands on each and every one of us at this moment. Lay your healing hands, O Lord, on us. Set us free from all that's keeping us from loving you. Free our families from the bondages of evil and obstruction. And Jesus, you are the source of peace. And could I just add, I came across a number of people recently all into mindfulness, into yoga, into shamanism, into going to mediums. This is all stuff that is taking the place of Jesus, who is salvation. Mindfulness wouldn't have liberated the demonic man. We cannot liberate ourselves, dear friends. Jesus is the savior of the world. Say it. Jesus. Praise him. Glory to him. So we pray for one another now and we pray the beautiful chaplet of mercy and we're praying today in the theme of this conference for the whole world, the whole wide world. Our country needs the mercy of Jesus. We're crying out, Jesus, for your mercy. And we are going to cry out now, dear friends, cry out that he will bless our nation, but also the nations of the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty, from there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, the blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Your family may be troubled with addictions and compulsions, obsessions, fear, even despair. Your family may be tormented with hatred and conflict. We pray now that God in his mercy will break the hold of evil over us and over our families. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, the blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. We ask God in his mercy to nullify those forces which are seeking to undermine the faith and the gospel in our land and among our people, that those forces will be crushed. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, the blood of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins, those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Let's apologize to the Lord for the many times we've given in to doubt, fear, and mistrust, for the times we've hurt him by our mistrust, by not turning to him in prayer when we should. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, the blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins, those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Let's stretch our arms now, mindful of the crucifixion of Jesus, as did Saint Faustina while praying the chaplet. And what a wonderful gathering of faith-filled people today. And if there's anyone here who's afraid of confession, please don't give in to that fear. Go to confession today. We plead now, we plead as a great body of people, plead with the mercy of Jesus to deliver our nation and the nation of the world from the forces of darkness and evil that they will never ever succeed in crushing our faith. We remember especially the Coptic Christians in Egypt who are suffering so much at this time. Eternal Father, the body, the blood, soul, and divinity 
of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. And at this three o'clock hour, we contemplate the suffering, passion, affliction of Jesus on the cross. You expired, O Jesus, and the source of life gushed forth for souls, and an ocean mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world, empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth in the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. O blood which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. O blood which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust Jesus. Jesus, Jesus.